Hello everybody and welcome back to my let's play of Aurora Forex. Um, today we shall continue preparing for combat against, uh, well at the moment we're assuming it's an NPR over in the Canberra, in the CAN system, uh, but we'll find out more once we actually get there. Um, very likely it could be actually a, um, a uh, precursor. Because sometimes precursors start neutral, but then um, communication becomes impossible and they turn hostile and then, yeah, all the usual. Um, but we'll find out more once we actually get there and we're able to investigate the system. Now, um, made a little bit of progress and made a few changes. So uh, we're still working on building up the military in the naval shipyard. Um, and I'll cover in a second while we don't need as much. Um, additionally, um, You'll notice there's a new ship here, the uh, TJ Arunta. So I'll explain that one in a second as well. Um, we just finished re we've just finished building the last of our um, tal of our uh, lined up research lab. So we have 50 now, 10 for five subjects. Um, and you'll also notice that I've lined up magazines and missile launchers for our Sheehan class. The main reason for that is because I took another look at the Sheehan and. Engines are a good size, 31%. Uh, if anything, they're actually a bit small, but whatever. They're 31%. But you'll notice that the magazines and the missile launchers take up more space than the actual engines do, um, with uh, about 36% compared to 31%. So I've decided to prefab some magazines and missile launchers because that way um, we'll be able to get the Sheehan out um, even faster without having to wait for construction. Uh, we have got one of them out, though. You'll notice because um, we'll have we, we now have the range circles for the fire controls on the Sheehan. So fire control is up to here, um, so it can hit cam the Canberra jump point and go all the way out to Heeb. Um, while the arrow E has a 135 million range, so it can almost hit the sun from Earth, which is beautiful. Um, but that that will give us a good range, and hopefully um, it will outrange any of the. Uh, any missiles that the enemy might uh, employ. But uh, we're now working on box launch attack, uh, so that's going to take uh, about a year, um, but that's fine. So let, 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 me, let me go and explain those two ships. So first and firstly, firstly, the Warramonga class. You'll notice that it's shrunk. Main reason for this is because I've stripped out a few components, and the biggest one that I've stripped out was, of course, the actual jump drive. You'll notice that there is no more jump drive on the Warramonga. Um, the reason for this is because we only need one jump ship, right? There's only one jump ship that's really required. But I also needed to carry fuel. But I also needed to carry sensors. So having all of these things on it, that gives us too much role. So it's a role of a tanker, a jump ship, and a sensor ship. And that's too much. The other thing is that the sensor usually gets shot at first. And I don't want to expose my sensor ship, to, my jump ship, to gunfire. Because if your jump ship gets blown up, then you can't escape the system unless you have a jump gate. At which point, you're negating the jump ship anyway. However, this thing can't sit in the back and avoid combat entirely because I rely on these sensors and they're not multi-billion kilometer sensors that, I, that can sit in the back and light up the entire system. Um, and having, the, having your tanker and your jump ship be the primary target for hostiles, not a good idea. So what I've done is I've shrunk the Waramonga, which also means that we have to get the shipyard up to only 10,000 tons instead of 16. Uh, but I've split the jump sh jump um, and tanker rolls out to the Arunta class. So the Arunta can carry 5.2 million liters, which is enough to refuel most of the fleet, enough to get home if they run out, if they if they're a little bit short. Uh, but it also has the jump drive. Now. Great, great thing about military jump drives, they're considered commercial components. So this ship can basically sit indefinitely, and I can also use, build multiple of these and sit them on jump points all around my systems um, and basically have them sit there forever. And I can use these as 
effectively mobile jump gates. So what I can do is, for example, I can put one on the Salt to Rockhampton jump point, and I can put one on the Rockhampton to Cairns jump point, and that they will back basically act as refueling stations um, for my jump fleet to refuel to if required. But it will allow my jump fleet to go to jump immediately from Rocky to uh, from Salt to Rocky to Cairns and back without having to worry about building jump gates and without having to worry about hostile ships following me back like they could with jump gates. So that is going to be a very uh, neat little solution there. Um, and being 16 kilotons um, and underneath their own jump size, they are able to jump them both themselves and my entire combat fleet. Um, commercial ships with commercial engines can use military jump drives. I'll confirm it once I actually get these built. But I have used it before. They can use military jump drives as long as they are under tonnage. The reason why you want the reason why you want commercial jump drives is because when you have a 200,000 ton um, commercial ship, making a 200,000 ton military jump drive is going to be prohibitively expensive without major technological advances. So that is going to be our jump tender. And because it doesn't have to go into combat, we don't have to make it as quick either. Four th just under 4,000 kilometers a second, that's a good speed for a jump tender. And with all the fuel it's carrying, its range is effectively unlimited. You know, this could cross the galaxy in one run. Not a problem. Um, so that is where we're up to. So we're... Um, Stuart is on the construction. It's getting there slowly. Uh, it requires almost a full year of uh, productivity. So it'll probably take close to four. And yeah, you can see June 53, 57. We should be able to get enough um, Sheehan's out to be ready for combat by then, so Stuart can take over as soon as the fleet's gone. I'm building some more military engines because I've only got seven left, and considering how many of them I have per ship, it's I'm, I'm a little bit reluctant to run out. Um, oh, there's two batches. Righto. Okay. Um, cancel that one, then. Start building those manganese. Um, yeah, so we've got more engines on the way. We've got the steward on the way. we got the construction factory slowly pumping out. So that's fine. And that is where we are at at the moment. So we'll continue on and wait for more ships to appear. Um, I've also uh, finished tooling for the tug. So that is... Um, that finished recently as well, so the tug is now um, up to scratch. Oh, uh, and a note, the Stuart, when I built it last, it didn't have enough crew berths. Um, I've now raised it to... Oh, that doesn't sound right. Yes, no, it is. Um, I raised it to 693, because uh, if you get... Um, I've only got 30,000 tons. Um, there should not be... Uh, so if you go have a look, right, at the Sydney. No, not the Sydney. The river, right. It's 16,000 tons. So I can't even fit two of these in there. And they've got 400 crew. So se almost 700 crew berths should be able to fit 30,000 ton worth of ship in there without having to worry. Um, and fighters there, 500 tons, and usually only have about two or three crew. So, uh, okay, go. so we got 30,000. Divide that by 500 tons for a fighter. So we've got 60 fighters. Multiply by, say, five crew, 300. So we can easily fit um, 30,000 tons worth of fighters on the Stuart. See, no problem. Anyway, um, and I, had, I did have to use uh, Space Master mode for that, but it doesn't matter because the um, ship hadn't been, well, the PDC hadn't been constructed yet. Um, so that will just be automatically taken into consideration um, and it'll be built uh, in the correct method. A salvage, a 1,000 ton salvage module is almost up and running. I'm looking forward to salvaging those uh, big wrecks. Although, um, wrecks, wrecks that are generated uh, through system generation usually will only ever really yield minerals because uh, the components are 
guess, are assumed to be completely destroyed and they're just generated wrecks with minerals. They don't really have any components per se. Uh, ooh, ice sheet on Mars is melted. Mars now has liquid water. We're up at minus 24. So the albedo has jumped up by 0.015. Hurrah. Um, anyway, that should uh, hit 1.0 soon enough once the atmosphere reaches breathable oxygen concentrations. Okay. So we'll keep on pumping. Being a little bit on the slow side today. Not sure why. There we go. Uh, mm -hmm. Once the salvages module is done, we can um, upgrade the salvage ship as well. I find that the 1,000 ton salvage module is usually good enough. Um, later on, when you get to higher tech levels, uh, you can get bigger ones. But for the moment, uh, 1,000 tons is enough. Um, most ships that are going to be coming across are going to be in the... Um, in, uh, in about 20 to 30 tons. So that's about 20 to 30 days for... Um, for a single one of these modules, and obviously I'll be running two of them, so 15 days for most ships, um, or less than 15 days for one ship salvage, is a pretty good rate. I mean, you can even put a third one on there and shrink it down, but then you get uh, diminishing returns when it comes to time frames, so um, you only get so much benefit out of it. Okay. I mean, ultimately, the biggest uh, when you're salvaging, you really don't need much speed unless you're blockading um, a jump point and they're sending ships constantly through. So 1,000 will be enough. So this one we've got to get up to 10,000 and I'm, like I said I'm using the smaller ones because that's more efficient in terms of time and we do need to get it out there um, soonish. Thankfully we only need one um, sensor ship because hopefully our defenses will be sufficient. And ultimately, you know, even if the sensor ship does get blown up, all of our combat ships do have their own sensors, so it's not that big of a deal. Um, yes, more civilian mining complexes. Uh, one thing to note, by the way, um, I don't know, I, th I think another, I don't think anybody's actually mentioned it, but um, one civilian mine is actually equal to uh, I'm not buying this one. One civilian mine is actually equal to 10 mines. So, 9 civilian mines is equal to 90 of your own mines. So, just keep that in mind. You know. <clears throat> Alright, how are we doing? Gallocytes. Do we have a mine for gallocytes? We have one, but it's not very good. We are going to need... We are going to need some gallocytes and soon. This one might do it. It's not much, but it got mined out, mined out pretty quick, and then we're getting geranium. Uh, to Tritanium and Macassium, this will be another point later. Here we go, gallocyte. Gallocyte on crumbling. So we need. Let's go for two mass drivers. How many do we have on Earth? Nine. Plenty. Good. Mass driver supply. Uh, I'm not sure if I've actually. I mean, no, no, I have done civilian contacts before. So how many mines do we have on Earth? We have 200 auto mines. That will do fine. 200 supply and Cromelin 200 demand. Where is Cromelin at the moment? Okay, it's not out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, bodies, bodies, bodies. Here we go.
It would be nice if these were alphabetical. Okay, let's go the other way. Kremlin. Here it is. Okay. Kremlin is on its way out, but it's still close by, so that will do. Um, and just to make sure that our civilians are actually working. Yes, there they go. All right, they're making runs on Kremlin now. Hopefully that should be nice and quick and they'll be able to load up those mines before Cromlin gets too far out. Um, on the swing back, um, we'll pick those mines up again. We are shipping mines from Earth, aren't we? Yes. Okay, good. Yep, they're slowly sh uh, shipping out. And does Cromelin have the... It's a mining colony now. Uh, does it have the... Yes, it does have the mass driver. Perfect. We'll start uh, throwing... Um, Galasite back home, ASAP. We're also getting some nice Saurium, Boronite, and Tritanium, which is always nice, but uh, we're here for the Galasite, ultimately. Okay. Okay, almost done. Do we have anything lined up for him? Yeah, combat drop modules. Good. There we go. Alright, so we'll go ahead and do up the my, the uh, salvage ship now. Now, the salvage was our not Collins, not Grimsby, it was the Amphion. Here we go. Copy that. Rename it to the... Okay, so for some reason it decided to stop recording um, and didn't tell me because, you know, I can't actually see the recording system from where I, from my single screen. Um... So what we did was we renamed it to the Amphion 5000. Um, we put it up to 5000 a day and stripped out the cargo. So we're going to be running uh, freighters with it. Um, mostly, um, we got it a few more ships. We've been building the Sheans. We got the um, the second slipway up, which is great. Um, that's about it. And we've just been doing exploring. So we found a few systems. So we've got the... The Diamond, which is empty. Southport, which is nice. Um, got a star about 2 billion million kilometers out from the primary. So most of the, so these planets are not actually all accessible to us. And we've got the Parramatta over here as well. So um, our empire is growing. We're sitting... Yeah, this is the, uh, the Southport system. This is the primary star, which we're currently surveying. Uh, it is... 5,000 million kilometers across with an outlier planet or at 12,000 million. This is the entire system. Yes, that is 2 
billion million. No, that's two million million kilometers. So um, for the and there's no and there's no Lagrange points up here as well, which means that you can do a Lagrange jump in here, but there's no actual way to do a fast travel between the primary star and the secondary star, um, and which is which is really annoying because the secondary star. The secondary star has three really nice planets on it. Three of them. This one, this one, and this one. Three of our blue planets are on the secondary star. Whereas the primary only has two. It's horrible. Pathetic. Look at it. I mean, yeah, we've got a bunch of nice planets, but three but three of them are over here. So um, unless we dig up a jump drive somewhere, um, it's not going to happen. We're, we're, that that is going to be completely accessible because it's just completely not worth the trip. I mean, we'd have to design custom ships to bridge that gap, and it's just not worth it. So that's just ridiculous. But we're going to do the inside systems, which is um, and that should do. Uh, we've almost got the 0.5 liters per engine of economy. Um, and we've also got the M sensitivity of 14, which is good. Uh, combat drop module is um, getting there as well. And even the box launcher. Everything everything is getting close, which is great. So uh, we're just banging away at getting these out. So we got the pixie and the werewolf on the construction. And once those are done, I think we'll probably have enough. Um, we need the... Is this a first jump ship? I think it is. But either way, we'll need those warships out uh, first, and then we can uh, think about going to war. No, it's the second one. I've, I've built one, and I will actually send it off to its position. So, shipyard task group, and Arunta... Detach it, refuel, and we shall send it to the Rockhampton jump point. There. So when it sits here, it acts as a bridge, and it acts as a two-way jump gate that you can tell to go away. Um, also, because it's your own ship, only allied ships can actually use it. So a hostile ship can't follow you through the jump gate if you're using a jump tender. Um, I'm not sure if I did it in the in the first half of the video either. So we also started mining um, Crumlin, so that those 200 mines are there. Um, oh, got a little bit more on the way. Um, and we're getting some nice amount of galasite to make up for the um, exhaustion here. Galasite is really important because galasite is almost entirely used for engines, um, and engines are almost entirely used for galasite. So, um, <clears throat> if you want to build ships, you need galasite. You need a you need a fair amount of it, or especially if you want to build fast military ships. Um, if you have a look, ship components, commercial ship, 100 galasite. Military ship, 540 galasite. So, big difference. Galasite is very, very important. Uh, we've got some unused construction, so we'll shunt that into the steward. Get that out a little bit sooner. <clears throat> I'm just going to close this window. Okay. So, keep working on that. How are we doing on the shipyards? Well, um, tell the civilians to bugger off. We don't need them anymore. So, sensitivity is now done. So, let's see what else we need. We need... You know what, I think I will get this one, because the testing that I've done with the missile um, tracking bonuses comes from using 100% 
uh, bonus technology, and it could be possible that just the 100% technology is broken. So we'll try the 40% and we'll see if that actually makes a difference. Um, and I'll show you how to do the math on that as well. Um, so, well, assuming that they shoot missiles at us, you know, obviously. Because um, if they don't, then we're not going to get that. But um, I'm also concerned about countermeasures. So um, we'll get those out. And we'll start working on uh, counter and counter countermeasures. <clears throat> okay, so we got our first ship in position. Okay, and we need another thousand tons, and then we can tool up our sensor ship. Better build those sensors. Do we have those sensors? I don't think we do. We do not. Okay, so that's how we can put those tw those twenty five into. Uh, we need the five oh six, and uh, let's make five of these. And we need the forty six R one. Make five of those. That'll give us enough sensors to get five five um, sensor ships. We won't need five of them, but uh, it'll be handy to have a spare just in case. Okay. Good. Still recording. Gonna be extra paranoid nowadays. No, now for those for that recording. All right, so that's 0.5 liters engine uh, engine power, which is great. And now we're starting work on the Tokamak fusion plant, which is going to be nice. Um, they do want capacitor, so queue that up next, and uh, we'll switch to the engine. Um, just so we don't waste any of those uh, lovely research points. Well, that's going to take a while, so we're not going to not going to hold the holding breath, <clears throat> especially because you know the fusion and the reactor tech is going to take a while, and then about two and a bit years at, currently, and then on top of that you have to do the engine tech, which is going to be about the same. So, yeah, no holding breath there. <clears throat> Okay, this one's almost ready. All right, missile launches are done, and the other sensor is under construction now as well. Brilliant. <clears throat> Once those are done, I'll put them into the Stuart as well, so we can get that built. Ah, box launcher is done. Beautiful. And there's the shipyard. So we will tool it for the Waramanga. And we will... Oh, we need a naming convention. Um, let's name it after... What should we name it? Insects, maybe? about Royal Canadian Navy patrol vessels wonderful let's do it okay so obviously first one is 
the Waramunga and we'll start construction and that will take until March 56 so we're gonna get our next two Sheans out by then we're gonna get the Sydney out by then but that's a that's to salvage support so that's fine uh, the second the Runta is gonna be finished a few days later which is fantastic so we will have a combat fleet ready around March uh, 2056 Excellent. Um, now we finished. What do we just finish? Missiles. Right, it was missiles, so we finished. Uh, we finished box launchers. So we'll continue on on the two stage warhead. Okay. So box launchers are unique in terms of launchers. So a standard missile launcher, right? So um, right. So uh, da -da -da -da, where's paint? There we go. Okay. So a standard launcher, right? So you've got the hull here, and a standard launcher is going to be basically a tube and it's going to have the feed system here that and it's going to be attached to the magazine which is down here in the belly of the ship and it's got shutters here that act as armor that seal it up uh, stop it from getting blown up in a direct hit so they can't shoot down to the missile. Uh, and these obviously open up so that you can, so the, when the missile fires. And then you've got the feed system which basically pulls missiles from the magazine. Right? Now, this is all arbitrated in the size of the missile launcher itself. Right? And the miniaturization basically miniaturizes the feed system so that it's as small as possible, right? Box launchers, box launchers are different in that they don't even have a feed system at all, right? They are literally just the tube. They have no connection with the magazines. And what this means is that even if you have a magazine, you can't actually reload it within the ship itself. So what you do is you land on a freight, you land on a freighter uh, or a hangar, and then the crew comes along and it loads your missile. Oh, I can't even see that. It loads your missile through here. Like the old cannonball styles, right? It loads the missile into the tube and it's rigged up to the fire control over here and it's still connected via like cable or whatever. So you load the missile, the tube talks to the missile and it can still communicate it and tell it to fire. So the tube is still the same size but there's no feed system. So with box launchers, you have to have um, some way to reload it, which means that you have to have a hangar. Box launchers are essentially the bomber tool. And if you have a look with launcher design, there it is, All right? So 75, so three quarter size, half size, third size, quarter size 15th so 1.15 which is like six that's about a sixth of the size right so you can get a size one for 7.5 so a standard launcher is 50 tons for a size one launcher and if you're looking at a size six right that's 300 tons for a launcher on the other hand 45 tons for a launcher very fast um, but uh, but it takes 45 minutes to reload it in a hangar so yeah um, MF reload not sure what that is actually MF, MF. I think this is if you dock it at a planet because I think they can reload at a planet but I don't know I've never actually tried so, um, we'll be able to find that out uh, eventually. However, this does mean 
that we essentially have all the core technologies we need to start building fighters. So with the next engine technology, um, we will actually start uh, manufacturing some fighters, which is going to be nice. So Amphion, actually just thinking. No, we don't have populated systems outside, so good. <clears throat> Okay, drop module, perfect. All right, that's on the way. And we are waiting for, what are we waiting for? We're not waiting for technologies, we're waiting for the ships, right. <clears throat> oh, ooh, Southport has found, Southport A8 Moon 3. We found an anomaly over here. What anomaly did we find? Southport. Here it is. Unusual magnetic field. Built a colony to it. It's going to have to be an asteroid colony, but let's see what's there. Um, Need to reopen. Southport. Here it is. And we get biology and genetics. Worthless. Any minerals? No. Scrap it. Don't need it. Okay. Keep going. Alright, so the other Sydney is done. Excellent. Shin will be done in a Tick or two. There we go. Now, just in case, we will start working on the next two Sheans. Do we have enough? Yeah, we've got engines, we've got launchers and we have magazines so yeah we'll start working on the two shins the wyvern and the yeti but they obviously won't be involved in this combat because oh i guess they will they'll be done in february um where among will be done in march so these two will be able to come with us excellent So in about six months, we will have our combat fleet. What is taking it so long, though? Let's go have a look at the... Oh, uh, I don't think I have the jump drive built. I never actually built the jump drive, did I? Oh my god, we definitely had the engines. Search sensors. Oh, no, it doesn't have a jump drive. It's just the engines. It must be all the armor or something. I don't know. But for some reason, it's taking a while to build. It really shouldn't be because you know, we got engines. We're not building anymore, so they obviously were there when we started building. Oh, well, more time to build missiles. <clears throat> Okay. Going there slowly. Twenty minutes. What the thirty-five total now? So, I think what I'll do is we'll get the Sheens out. We'll get the Waramonga. We'll organize the battle fleet. We'll send the Arunta out to go and then we'll take a cut and we'll do the actual battle in the next episode so uh you guys get another cliffhanger we'll see how we go though we might have to cut this uh, before that because uh youtube has been a little bit annoying with its uh with the uh close to one hour episodes with processing them so um I don't necessarily want to tempt fate by going 
uh, any longer than I've already been going. New jump point of Parramatta, yes. Anything coming soon? Construction rate is coming soon. That's good. Ah, the Amphion 5000 is done. Or the tooling for the Amphion 5000 is done. We will refit the Amphion 2. Youch. What are we refitting? The salvage modules. And the tonnage difference is huge as well. At this point, I think we can scrap it. Yeah, at this point we can scrap the Amphion, uh, the old Amphion 2, because it's just not worth it. Um, because refitting will take 3,600 build points. It'll be faster to just scrap and rebuild. So, start construction, and we'll grab this one, and we'll do the scrap. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> we'll keep waiting on that. This does mean that we don't have a salvager for the time being, but it doesn't matter because, you know, it's a salvager and we've got nothing to salvage. The only thing that we have to salvage is in a system with potentially hostile aliens, so definitely not going to send an unarmed, unescorted salvager in there. Okay, search sensor is done. Uh, construction rate is now 20. Excellent. So we now have almost 30,000 build points, and we got more on the way. Um, do we need to build anything? We've got 200 ordnance production. Let's get some more ordnance production. Or some, some more ordnance factories. Let's go for another 300. If we're going to be doing missiles, we're going to need more of them. Okay. <clears throat> when is this one going to be done? March, April, May. So Stuart's going to be done about two months after a battle fleet is ready to go. Now, we will be leaving some ships in Seoul. We don't have to bring all of our beam ships, for example. Um, we're only going to be bringing maybe two or three. Because uh, they're just going to be doing the finishing. We already know that the enemy can go much faster than us. So they're not going to be useful in an offensive capacity. Um, so they're just going to have to stay home. Uh, but that just means that they will be providing some PPV. Uh, to stop the uh, colonies from being unhappy. Until the steward can be built. Amphion 1 should be scrapped any day now. There we go. And we're not going to need the smaller salvage modules, so we can just scrap those. Uh, we don't need the smaller survey sensors either, so scrap them. Um, yeah, everything else is good enough. Um, you can see what you scrapped here. Uh, it doesn't really show it in here, but it does show it in here. Um, so you can see salvage modules. We got a little bit of wealth, geranium, cobamite, and boronide. And we got the wealth of uridium from those uh, two sensors as well. Uh, and for the ship we got the salvage modules out of it we got the 400 ep commercial magneto plasma drives which we can always put into another ship so we'll leave those alone and two and a half million liters of fuel so yes very nice what we got we got 300 million reserve yeah no problem there <clears throat> okay okay
The biggest issue, of course, will be, are the missiles going to have the range needed to get those ships? Because, like, with, with a speed of 15,000, right? Um, missiles, missiles, missiles. Here we go, right? So the Arrow E, right? It's got just over, um, just under two. It's got about 1.8 with a maneuver of 18. So 1.8 times 18 is. Well, actually, we can figure it out. 27,700 divided by about 15. Thousand times that by the maneuver of eighteen. That only gives us a thirty-three percent accuracy, right? So they're not going to be very accurate, and if they hit, they're going to do a bit of a chunk of damage. But I am rather concerned that we're just not that the arrow E's are just not going to be effective against them. Um, we'll have to wait and see. But mm. ah, the Grimsby one is done. Still got 43%. That's fine. We'll do a gra we'll start the grab survey, which is good. <clears throat> How are we doing on the shipyard? Almost ready. February 56. <clears throat> All right, the Wyvern and the Yeti have been completed. And the Waramonga will be complete any day now. There we go. All right, we have our... We now... Oh, let's get the Yarunta. We need the Yarunta out for the second jump. There we go. Okay, so we so let's build a combat fleet, and then we'll see what's what. So first up, we grab all of our combat ships, move them across. Do we have any hiding anywhere? No, we don't. Good. We got a Canberra hiding. Oh no, it's a Grimsby. Okay. So what do we got? We got our laser destroyers. All right, we only need a few. So let's take... I think four might be enough. We got the Birmingham... What's a Birmingham? Tanker. It's not a jump-capable tanker. Um... Ah, uh, that's fine. We'll take the Birmingham. A little bit of extra fuel can't, didn't hurt. Um, we've got 20 billion. Actually, let's check the range first. Kansas is only 10 billion out. We've got 20 billion in the tank. So we can actually, in theory, run in and run back with only a little bit extra fuel. So we know we do not need the extra tanker. Birmingham, you're staying home. Uh, we have the Boromonga to provide fueling on the return trip anyway, so that's fine. Um, we have one, two, three, four, five, six missile boats. Excellent. And we have two escorts to provide, um, point defense. And don't forget that these guys also have, um, AMMs as well, which means that we are going to have an absolute hail of anti-missile systems, um, to handle anything they might throw at us. So... Checking real quick, we've got 
full fuel load for everything except our two rivers. Oh yeah, our point defense ships. Our point defense ships for some reason only have 30% fuel. Not sure why. Uh, that needs to be fixed. Are they acting as tankers? No. They must have just lost some fuel somewhere. Weird. Um, and we have the press to provide the final jump. Excellent. So what we'll do is, first and foremost, we will de we'll split off the press bar. Right, and what do we have? We still have Jump Scout. We do need the Warramonga to come with. We need all of these to come with. So what we'll do is we'll do a little bit of task, task force training because the 0% and the, these ones, they're going to cause uh, fleet movement delays. So actually, no, we will bring, we will bring the press bar because she's got commercial engines, which means that it's going to, um, she's not going to burn much fuel, but it's going to bring our fleet speed down, which means that, um, our task force training is going to keep to a lower speed, which means that we won't burn through as much fuel. So that's fine. So we'll refuel re real quick. There we go. And we'll do a little bit of task force training. So while we do the task force training, um, actually, I'll show you real quick. So in the task group orders, it'll say that it's on task force training. You can't give it any orders and it won't respond to them either. Um, I'll just scrap this empty task group. I think I've got another one as well. Yeah. This one as well. Okay, so it won't respond to any orders, and the orders and uh, any orders that, that it had, I think, do get wiped or ignored. Um, the other interesting, the, so what will happen is that the task force will randomly move around at random speeds up to its maximum. So it's only going to 929 at the moment. So it's doing low speed maneuvers, flying around the system, and just basically building up its task force training, right? So you'll see that it's moving in random directions. And if we do a larger tick, then it'll move longer. So it'll pick a random direction every tick, and it'll just move in that direction at the speed that it's decided at. Um, one thing you'll notice is that uh, generally... It should be using ships marked as tankers for its fuel. More among it, that's the jump ship, so the... Oh, Amphion 2 is obsolete, get rid of it. Um... No, not the Sheen. The Arento. Yeah, Arento's marked as tanker. Okay. And we do have one. Hmm. Um, but it should be using tanker fuel. So all ships will automatically draw fuel from the tanker. Um, so if we do a couple more eight hour ticks. Yeah. For some reason, it's not doing it, but um, yeah. So with task forces, uh, they should be they should automatically refuel from the, any tankers in the fleet. But you'll notice that eventually the um, the task force training value should go up. Let's wait for a production day. That feels like it. There we go. There we go. So the so every production day they'll automatically refuel from the tanker in the fleet, um, and they should start building up uh, task force training 
uh, in the meantime as well. So it might take a little while, and this one is classes. No, this is not three. Yeah. Um, either way, they'll start, they'll start building off task force training. So we'll let them run, and I'll put a we'll cut in here, and we'll continue on once the task force is nicely trained up, and we will then go to war. So thank you for watching, and see you next time.